friends, this is Jessica with Simply Jessica Marie, and today I'm going to go over a tutorial about how I use Shay's SC Stock Shop Style Stock Photos in my wedding invitation and stationery design business. I love Shay's photos, they are the only style stock that I use, and you'll see why after I show you this tutorial. So if you go to Shay's website, it's scstockshop.myshopify.com and then go up to the main tab and click on the desktops. We're going to be using one of her desktop photos today. So if you scroll down towards the bottom of this first page, we are going to be using this beautiful styled stock photography blush pink desk collection number 27. And if you want to follow along and use this exact photo so you can see how to use this image that I'll be using today. There are currently seven items left of downloads for this individual item. So you can either use this photo or any of Shay's desktop styled flat images work really beautifully. Make sure that you get one that matches your brand's personality and color palette and then you can follow along that way too. So I am going to be using both Illustrator and Photoshop today in our tutorial. Illustrator to actually create the um, styled stock image that I'll be saving as well as to make sure and have my design files open and I'll go over what we're using Photoshop for in just a second. But if you want to decide on what type of invitation or greeting card or any type of flat stationery that you want to try out with your styled stock photo today, make sure and open your PDF file we're going to use the actual original file for this tutorial and moving forward with any of your styled stock images that you use. I prefer to do this because it retains the high quality of the original design file rather than placing um, a PNG file or JPEG or anything on top of that that might not be quite as crisp and clear. So I have my thank you card file open and then I'm also going to show y'all how I use envelopes paired with envelope printing if I want to showcase how to use like for instance an address stamp or I offer envelope printing services to a lot of my brides so I like to showcase them how they're going to look digitally before we send anything to print. So I'm going to have this file open here as well and don't worry I changed our address we don't live on 123 Macaroon Way as much as I wish that was our real address. Anytime that I am putting something on social media I do like to make a fake address just for privacy purposes. So speaking of envelopes I'm going to head back to my browser and go over to Paper Source's website. I actually use a different envelope supplier, but everyone loves and knows Paper Source, so I figured for simplicity purposes, I would show you guys how to do this type of flat lay with Paper Source envelopes. So if you go to their main website page and then click on Envelopes and Paper, head over to the Envelope section, and I just went to the Solid Envelopes. And then the thank you card size that I'm using is A2. So when you go to that page, it'll pop up a few different size options. So click on the A2 envelopes. And my personal favorite from them is in this Lux section here. If you scroll over the little color tabs, it will change the envelope previews. So I like the Lux blush. So I'm just going to have my cursor hover over this envelope file. Right click and then click Save Image As and I'll save it as PS blush envelope. And for right now, I'm just going to save it to my downloads folder, but if you have a paper source envelope folder in your personal computer, you can save it to that, or for your specific client or shop product, you can save it to that too. So it will download to my downloads bar here, and I'm just going to click on it and drag the file over to Photoshop Sometimes it takes a second, there we go, after it downloads. And it will pop up the image in Photoshop. I'm currently using Photoshop CS6, but I'm actually going to probably be transferring over to Photoshop CC soon. So just for reference, this is CS6. Um, so the layout of CC might be a little bit different. So as you can see here, the image that is saved from Photoshop has a large white background surrounding our blush envelope, and we're going to want to get rid of that in order to be able to lay the envelope on top of the desktop back in Illustrator. 
So to do that, you're going to go over to the toolbar on the left hand side and originally it will look like this with just an eraser, but if you hold down on the eraser and then scroll down to the magic eraser tool, this is my favorite tool to use to get rid of um, large areas of white in the background. And something that's important to note for, depending on the color of the image that you're not wanting to erase, so for instance, this is a blush envelope on a white background, you're going to want to make sure that you have a low tolerance set here. Anywhere between 5 and 15 will be good for this type of magic eraser tolerance. If you're using a navy envelope or something that's darker that isn't quite as similar in color here, you could have a higher tolerance. And all that means is that the tolerance is the area that is picked up when you click on the white background. Um, so if I did like 100 here, let's test it out just to show you and clicked on it. Yeah, so it's going to completely erase everything, which we obviously want to avoid. So making sure that we have our tolerance set lower will allow me to click on the white background and it will just erase the white around the envelope and leave this pretty blush envelope here for us to use with a transparent background. So after we finish that, I'm just gonna have you go to File and Save for Web and this will allow us to save a PNG file that we can use to overlay on top of the styled stock photo. So something important to note when saving, you're gonna to wanna to make sure your transparency is checked here because if it's not, then that <laughs> the things that we just did are kind of useless um, since the white will show up again in the background. So make sure that you have transparency clicked and then I like PNG 24, it's just the best resolution in my opinion and then hit save. And again, I'm just going to save this in my downloads folder for now, but you can save it wherever you would like to. So now we're done in Photoshop for right now. I know a lot of designers like to design their images in Photoshop, but since I'm more of a stationer and artist by trade, I'm more comfortable with Illustrator. And I have a feeling that a lot of y'all who are stationers might feel the same way. Um, so I'm going to go back over into Illustrator and again for reference this actually is Adobe Illustrator CC. I have upgraded this version um, just to compare. So this is CS6 in Photoshop and this is CC. So we have our design files open but we're going to need to create a new file for our actual style stock image. So you could either click Command N or go up to File New to create our new artboard. So the widths that I have here, the widths and the height, they're actually already in here. Um, and these are what I like to use for Instagram and my blog. I prefer to have something that has a little bit larger of a size so that the resolution is nice and crisp for blogs, but it's also still a manageable size to download onto your phone to use for Instagram. And the reason why these are a little bit wonky is because it actually is the perfect size for a vertical image on Instagram, um, just at this larger scale. So 1728 width by 2160 height is what I found to be perfect. We just need one artboard, it's a vertical orientation, and then we don't need a bleed since this is a digital file, not a print file. And then again, the color mode, we want to make sure this is an RGB and not CMYK since it is for web. And there's more settings that you could toggle with, but we don't really need to do that for this purpose. So just hit create and it will bring up our artboard. And now I'm going to go in and go to file open. Oh, I'm sorry. That's not what we want to do. We're going to go to file place. And I'm going to just type in stock image to see if I can pull up my styled stock photo folder. I think it's actually styled stock. There we go, this works. Okay, perfect. So here's the image that I want to use. So I'm going to click on it and hit enter and then in order to actually place the image on this artboard I'm simply going to click and it will place it and the thing that is most important to note before we're moving forward I'll zoom in so you can see is 
Shay's images are so beautiful and crisp and high resolution. And while it looks great right now, there's actually a next step that we have to take to make sure that the resolution is perfect. And all we have to do to do that is click this little embed button up at the top and you'll see it takes away any of the fuzziness and it is perfect for any close-ups that we want to use or if you're sending something for a client that they need to download and zoom in a bunch of times the resolution is going to be awesome so i'll zoom back out and just as a note another great thing about embedding the file is that as opposed to it not being embedded it's that's what's called a linked file is that in case you move this image to a different folder in your computer you're never going to have to worry about replacing this image it's always going to be embedded into this artboard so in order to make sure that we have the artboard completely full of the image i'm going to zoom out a few times and then go over to the left hand corner of this image and while holding the shift key i'm just going to drag the image and then hit release and I'll zoom in to see if I like how everything has been scaled. I personally love this top right corner of the photo. It's perfect for weddings and wedding stationery. Um, the flowers are beautiful. Tea goes really nicely with my brand. I love these vintage postage stamps and the ribbon and scissors. So for anything wedding related, I like to use this corner of the image. But if I wanted to do something that was more lifestyle focused, I might use this corner over here since it's got the rings and the beautiful marble phone case. Um, but for today's purpose, I'm going to use the right hand side and I'm actually going to hold the shift key and make the scale a little bit smaller um, just to make sure I have enough room here to play around with when I am placing my design files. So that looks good to me. So I'm going to go over to my layers panel and click down here and then lock this so I can't accidentally drag it and move the image after I've already positioned it perfectly how I would like it to be. So I'll zoom in a little bit here and our next step is going to be to go over to our stationary file and we are going to make a clipping mask here in order to place it onto our styled photo. So to do that, the things that are most important to note are that the background of your artboard is filled completely with a, right, a white rectangle. So this is going to be the very background layer of my um, board here. So if I hide that, you'll see that it's transparent. And while I usually send files to print transparent background, I'm going to want this white background here. So once I make the clipping mask, it has a nice crisp, crisp white background to pop against the stock photo. And this is actually a template from my printer, um, but if you're making your own file and it has a bleed, just make sure that you have a outline here that is the trim size so that it, it makes the perfect preview when we are making our styled photo. So I have all of the important design layers unlocked here. So all I have to do is drag my cursor on top of the entire image. And then to make the clipping mask, I'm just going to hit command and seven and that is going to essentially crop and trim the exact area that we need so it's a little preview of how this will look once it's printed and so you can see here it's got that nice white background instead of a transparent background so that's one of the key steps so now that I have this perfectly placed I'm going to hit command C to copy it go back over to my stock image artboard and then hit command V to place it and it's placed a little bit small right now and we're going to want to make sure and scale this so that it looks lifelike. The dimensions of this particular A2 size has a width of five and a half and the way that I kind of gauge a simple little trick of how to make sure to get the scale correct is to find a product in the stock photo that I know the dimensions of. So this is a standard iPhone. I'm assuming it's an iPhone 6 and I have an iPhone 6 in front of me and I've measured it and it's right at about four inches. So I know that this needs to be about an inch and a half larger than the phone. So I'm just going to rotate my stationary and then bring it up next to the phone 
and then that'll be five or four inches. Oh, let me make sure that it's at the bottom here. I'll zoom in a little bit so you guys can see. So it's a little bit bigger than the phone right now, but we want to make sure that it's closer in scale to five and a half inches. And this doesn't need to be perfect, but just finding something that's a similar scale will help you to get a sense of how large or small this needs to be. And I always err on the side of making your stationery a tiny bit larger than it needs to be in real life, um, just so that your shop customers can view all the details really nicely or if you're posting it on Instagram, that it is um, legible as well. Uh, so if it's too small, then you might have a problem with people actually viewing your artwork. But if it's too big on the other hand, then it just looks kind of out of proportion and out of whack. So now that I have this proportion nice and neat and rotated back over to the correct lay layout, um, I'm going to go ahead and place my envelope file that we just worked on in Photoshop. And I'm just gonna move this out of the way for the moment before actually determining the layout of the overall image. So I'm going to go to File and Place. Grab the PNG file and place it on the artboard. Just by clicking again, just like we did with the stock image. And I'm going to drag this envelope over on top of the stationary file and keep repositioning it so that it matches up with the corners. Oh, I'm so sorry, guys. For some reason, I guess. Oh, never mind. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure. Sorry, guys, it's late in the afternoon. I wanted to make sure that this was the correct transparency background. So in order to, dub to double check that you have the right file, you can drag the envelope on top of the regular background instead of your styled image to make sure you have the right file and it's transparent. Okay, so getting back to business here, I'm just going to drag it by holding shift and repositioning it again. So right now it's about the same size as the thank you card and I want to make it a little bit larger just because in real life envelopes are a teeny bit larger than the stationery that goes inside of them. So now that I have that positioned and scaled correctly, I'm also going to embed this file and it's nice and placed inside of the photo here. And then I'm going to go over to my envelope printing file and I'm going to copy and paste this on top of the envelope. And a little trick, to make sure that you have the scale of this correct is I'm going to simply drag a rectangle to be the size of the artboard and make sure that the color is in the stroke and not the fill. And kind of the opposite mindset of the thank you notes where we wanted the background of the artboard to be white, we want this background to be transparent because we're going to be laying the um, address file on top of the envelope file and we want to make sure that the envelope shows through. So we want a transparent background there. So I'm just going to drag my cursor over on top of everything and click Command C to copy it. Go back to my original artwork file over here with the styled stock image and then hit Command V. And this might take just a minute because I do have my custom wedding crest as a part of the envelope printing file. So it's a little bit larger of a placed art file than normal. There we go. And the perk of having that rectangular outline here is that I'm going to be able to have everything grouped together and I can just drag this easily and know exactly how I need to have it scaled. And then I can click on just the rectangle since I don't have it combined as a group and delete it. And you can zoom in and see that it's perfectly centered where it would actually be printed on the envelope. So I'm going to go ahead and group the envelope printing file with this envelope file here to make sure that 
if I move it, it moves together. So now that I have everything scaled perfectly, I'm going to think about the layout of what I want this to look like when I am posting it on Instagram or my blog. So the two key things I want to make sure and show are at least just to showcase that it's something that I offer to my clients. And then of course the full thank you card file to showcase that design as well. So right now this envelope file is on top of my thank you card file and I want it to be behind it. So I'm going to go back over to my layers panel, click on the group of the envelope and just drag it so it's behind the thank you card file. But now I've run into the issue of the address not showing. So I'm going to position this envelope file so that it's at an angle to make sure that you can see the majority of the envelope printing. It doesn't need to be everything, like I said, just the majority of it. And then also so that it kind of makes everything look a little bit more lifelike. When you have stationery on your desk, not everything is going to be prim and proper and in the exact straight <laughs> dimensions as you might just be doing something digitally. So I always like to rotate at least one of the images, usually the less important of the two. So in this case, that's the envelope file to add some character and um, real life tendencies to the image. So we're off to a great start. We're almost done, but this just looks a little bit flat. So in order to make sure your stationery looks like it is lifelike and blends in really nicely with the photo, we're going to do something called adding a drop shadow. So I'll zoom in and I'll start first with this stationery, the thank you card. And in order to add the drop shadow, we're going to go up to effect, stylize and drop shadow. And I actually already have it kind of preset in here with the um, settings that I like for this particular photo since I was working with this photo earlier, but it will pop up originally with color checked instead of darkness. So I'm going to want to have the darkness checked because it's going to be a little bit softer of a look. And I'm gonna click preview so you guys can see the difference. So right now it's a really soft shadow here and the file I was working with earlier was a little bit smaller of a scale so this one I'm actually going to want to play with these dimensions and percentages a little bit more. Um, so I'm going to actually increase this darkness and just to show you color versus darkness. This will be completely black and that's just not pretty or realistic so we're going to want to stick with darkness. And then I'm going to increase this to about 12%, just a little bit darker um, so it matches the shadows here. So while that's toggling around and changing, this is something that I want to note is you're going to want to look at a couple of different items in the layout itself to see where the natural shadows fall. So this shadow here is going upwards mostly and slightly angled to the right. And you can kind of see that here with the ribbon, it's going up and to the right. So I know that this shadow also needs to go upwards and to the right. And the way that we kind of make sure and change this is with the X offset and the Y offset. So the X offset is going to, let me change this to be 10. And if you watch here, it's going to be the horizontal offset here. So 10 increasing from six will make it go a little bit farther out to the right. I might wanna make that even a little bit more dramatic of a change. So I'm gonna change that to 15. There you go. So now you can see it on the right hand corner a little bit more, but now it's a little bit too even of a shadow and that's not as realistic. The shadow is going much higher upwards than it is over to the right. So I'm going to increase this, the Y offset, which is the vertical offset to 30 and see if that helps even it out a little bit. 
here we go. So this has about the same shape as the other shadows in the photo. So I'm pretty happy with that. Another thing that you can play around with is the blur. So this is kind of a crisp shadow here right now. So if I increase this, five is the natural blur that it's set at, but if I increase it to 10, it should be a little bit softer of a shadow. So this looks even more natural. So I'm going to keep it at 10. So it's a little bit more of a soft blurred out shadow. So we have 15, negative 30, 10, and 12. And I'm going to write that down just in case it doesn't save in my settings. So I'm going to jot that down right now and you can jot it down too. And I always kind of keep the opacity at 17 or 75% just for reference. Okay. So now that I have that written down, I'm going to hit OK and the drop shadow will be saved for that. So then I'll click on my envelope file, go back up to effect and drop shadow and it did save. So now all I have to do is click OK. And it will apply the drop shadow. And if I zoom out, you can see how nice and natural everything looks. This is a little bit too harsh for me, actually. Um, you don't have to have the drop shadows be exactly the same. In order to edit this, I'm going to go over to the Appearance tool in the right-hand side and click on the drop shadow. And I'm going to make the darkness a little bit less, maybe 9%, and I'll click on Preview. A little bit too harsh for my liking right now just for the envelope one though there we go so that's a little bit softer and blends in a little bit better with the first one so i'll click ok and then hide that and now i'll zoom out and everything looks great in my opinion here so this is perfect for sharing on social media i have everything kind of oriented in the center so that if this were cropped in a square I would still have all of the most important pieces showing here, but I usually like to do vertical photos. So now that I have everything saved and how I like it, I'm going to want to make sure I actually save my Illustrator file in case I want to come back and edit this at any point in time. So I'll go to File, Save As, and again, I'll just save this in the Downloads folder for right now. SC Stock Shop Tutorial and make sure that you save your Illustrator file. That's very important. So I'm just going to save it as Illustrator CC. Make sure that um, everything is checked so that it's editable and click OK. And Illustrator files usually take a little bit longer to save than other files. Um, so this might just take one moment, y'all. Got that fun spinning pinwheel here, everyone's favorite little icon. So I hope you guys have found this to be really helpful. Um, I know that I'm a very visual person, so I hope this video tutorial has been really helpful for you guys. And um, I'm excited to make some more tutorials with Shay and her team because I am really enjoying this educational aspect and being able to help other stationers use her styled stock images for their clients and for shop products and Instagram. Um, I would love to know if you guys have any questions. You can feel free to email me at simplyjessicamurray at gmail.com or um, comment on my Instagram. It's just at simplyjessicamurray. So I'm happy to answer any questions that you guys have after you have made your own styled stock image based off this tutorial. So it should be saved now. Okay, it's saving data recovery information. That's another perk that I like about CC. Okay, so now that our Illustrator file is saved, the next and last step will be to save it for web. So in CC, it's under the ex export little tab here and then go down to save for web, which is the legacy version. That's still what I like to use. 
and it's going to be really similar to the Save for Web in Photoshop um, up here. We don't want to have transparency checked this time because we want to make sure that the background is nice and beautiful. It wouldn't really matter because the stock image is on top of it, um, but just to show you the difference there. And again, we want to use PNG 24. And this is going to um, be really zoomed in right now since this is a large file size, but again, you can see how nice and beautiful and crisp Shay's images are. But if you want to get a little preview of how your image will look once it's saved, you can go down to this little tool here and click fit on screen. And then this is a preview of how your image will look. So it's great and it's really realistic looking right now, which is awesome. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and save it since I'm happy with how this looks. If you look at the preview and you notice like, oh, something was cropped kind of funny, I want to change the layout, then this is a good time to go ahead and go and fix that now before you save your file. But I'm happy, so I'm gonna click save and then um, just go back over to my downloads folder for the moment and save it. And this should only take a second. PNGs are usually a lot faster than the Illustrator files. And there you have it. So that is the process that I go through pretty much every time that I use Shay's images. Now that I have this set for a single stationary image, I'm actually going to make sure and keep this Illustrator files as a template so that moving forward, if I ever have any other flat A2 style cards, I can just place them on top of this image here and drag them and scale them to the exact same size so that Anytime I'm using this image in my shop or my portfolio or on Instagram, the stock image itself is cropped in the same dimensions to keep everything consistent. And it's also just a whole lot easier than having to do everything from scratch. So I would recommend thinking through a few different layout options using this image or your favorite image, saving them as Illustrator templates, and then going from there, just swapping out your design files to make your life a lot more seamless and processed. So again, if you guys have any questions at all, please feel free to reach out and let me or Shay know, and I'm happy to do a follow-up blog post or a video tutorial to further explain things. Thanks for following along, guys, and I cannot wait to see what beauty you make happen with your SC Stock Shop images. Have a great rest of your day, guys.